Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and this past weekend was the third Games Plus Jam. Our community game jam event where people were tasked with creating their own game in one weekend. And it was a whole bunch of fun. I streamed a few times over the course of the weekend, got a whole lot of interaction from amazing people working on their own games. And there was a bunch of really cool games created for the jam. Uh, I'll be doing a video next week covering some of my favourite games from the jam and I'll be showcasing them and stuff like that but today we're going to take a look at the game that I made for the jam in approximately 50 hours I think it was so the theme for this game jam was combining genres together and specifically we had a tool that was set up to generate a theme for you so I was streaming for the first couple of hours of the game jam so most of that first hour to hour and a half or two hours or so was me basically trying to choose what theme we would do. We we rolled a whole bunch of themes trying to find some fun ones and there was a lot of fun ones that we found along the way and it was it was also a lot of fun interacting with people in chat who were coming up with really cool uh, random games as well uh, that sounded like a lot of fun to work on. But we bounced around a few different ideas and tried to expand on them a little bit. We kind of narrowed it down as time went on with the help of chat and chat were amazing coming up with some suggestions of different ideas to use in the games as well. But eventually we settled on a roguelike golf game, which sounded like it could have plenty of potential. I've recently done a roguelike uh, dungeon crawler course on Udemy. So I figured, hey, I could reuse some of the ideas from that in this game and make something hopefully potentially interesting. So as I said, we kind of spent most of the first stream working on that idea. And then once the stream ended, I spent a bit of time making the basics of how the golf gameplay would work. Essentially just setting up a very simple level and getting the ball to kind of bounce around the way I want to. It didn't really work perfectly at first, but eventually we kind of got it uh, to something that looked roughly like a real ball bouncing around. And so being a roguelike game, I thought, well, we're going to need to have some enemies for our player to fight along the way. So I added a very simple little enemy into the level that you can attack when you're not uh, hitting your golf ball around like a little a maniac. Uh, so, and obviously being a golf game, I also then went ahead and created a very simple kind of power meter. Like a like the kind of classic golf game you'd see where you have to tap to start it, you have to click again to set the power level and then click again when it goes back down the bottom to make it as accurate as possible. So I set that all up and I basically just played around with the power bar, tweaking a few different things and then eventually I went to sleep at the end of the first day with the basic core gameplay elements in place. When I woke back up the next morning I basically spend a little bit of time setting up a simple menu system because I didn't want to have to worry about doing that later especially when you get later and later into a jam stuff like that starts to fall by the wayside it doesn't feel as important so I always find that getting menus and some basic things like that into your game early means that uh, you'll be able to have it in your project and there's something that's really important when someone plays a game they expect to have menus that they can navigate around. They don't have to look beautiful and amazing. As you can see, the menus I made were very, very simple. But just having the core idea of them there, uh, I think, is really useful for a, a game jam game. And also, it makes the game feel more like a real game when you have like a main menu and a pause menu and things like that. I also had a little bit of screen shake in for fun for when you hit the ball or when you hit the enemy too. So with that done, I knew I needed to create a tile set for the golf course. Uh, elements that I wanted to use because I wanted to be able to draw these levels relatively easily so I knew I wanted to use a tile map for that so I wouldn't have to manually move everything around as I was going uh, so we spent a little a good bit of time working on that stuff and I started the stream on Saturday then again with the tile map stuff drawn so I could actually start converting the cor test course that I already had into using the tile map system. I also then started creating a character select screen so that every time you started a new run, you get different players. And in my head, I had ideas for this that I wanted the characters to have different stats as well. So it would just be randomized stats. I think when I was working on it initially here, I had to be between one and 10, but that was kind of going to be too much. So I said, oh no, a little bit later I restricted that to between 1 and 5 but the idea was to have that influence your gameplay so you'd be able to move around faster or 
put more power into your shots or make it more accurate but in the end that never actually got implemented in the game i know exactly how i would have done it it was just a matter of time it was more important to get the actual gameplay of the dungeon exploring uh done a little bit later uh but it should have been a very simple system but it just as all things happen in game jams you don't get everything implemented that you want to so it's important to focus on the core mechanics of your game and extra stuff like that can come along a little bit later and to be honest uh, people playing the game have played the game and seen those stats it's a weird psychological trick nobody has questioned that the player players feel, don't feel any different or anything like that it's a weird psychological trick that players will actually think there's a difference in the games there was a, there was a racing game that did this uh, they released the game fully and all the cars had different stats but in actual fact there was nothing different about them it was a really interesting kind of test case but anyway we'll move on so with this character select screen select created i wrapped up the stream there and then went and had a quick bit of dinner and while i was eating made a very very simple dungeon tile set which you can see around the edges of the screen here so i knew that i was going to have rooms that were going to contain the golf courses so i wanted to create a very simple way to do that and as i said i i knew i wanted to have rooms i knew i wanted to use a similar dungeon generation technique that i'd use in my roguelike course so i wanted to set up some rooms uh, that i could check how the navigation would work in the game so i made set up some rooms in a very simple layout then made it so that getting the ball in the hole for each course would unlock doors so that you could progress between each room i then set up the level generator to work as i said pretty much like the roguelike course that i did on udemy uh, recently it essentially just randomly chooses randomly places the rooms around and then after the rooms have been placed create walls and anywhere that there's two rooms beside each other it'll create a wall with a door between those two rooms so very simple but it works really nicely and creates kind of fun little levels to explore so with that done i went ahead and gave the enemies some health because i didn't want them to just be destroyed as soon as you hit against them or anything like that it was a bit too easy to defeat them in that way and so i gave them some health and a little health bar to represent how much damage they were taking i then also added a map to the game which I eventually put the map on the pause menu so it wasn't cluttering up the screen because I found it kind of got in the way of the screen as you were uh, exploring around. So it was easier to just put it on the pause screen. So if you're kind of getting lost, you can just pause, have a little look and say, oh, I've been this way. I can go back whichever way I want to. And the final thing I did then for the night was create an exit for the level. Basically a giant golf hole that drops you down to the next set of courses uh, along your little adventure. So with that done, I headed off to sleep and got all set up for the next day, the final day of the game jam. So when I woke up in the morning, I got a whole bunch of kind of basic elements done. I added some health for the player so you could keep track of how much player, how much health the player had and how much damage you were taking from enemies and such. Uh, I also added a way to show the power score for the room and the overall score for the whole level. So what happens is for each room, you're given a power score to aim for, say three or four shots. And if you get under, you get a minus value. And if you get over, you get a plus value. But obviously, like cl kind of classic golf, you want to get a minus score. And then at the end of the level, whatever your total uh, power value for the whole uh, dungeon level uh, would show up, would be kept, kept track of and show up at the end. Now, the idea here, again, that I wanted to implement was that you get to the end of the level and then however many uh, shots below par you were, you would get uh, a coin and then you'd be able to upgrade your player. So that stat system that I get, didn't get to implement earlier also didn't get to be implemented here because that was the idea of what you would do uh, in between each level so again in a full kind of game if this game jam game was expanded to a full game that's definitely what i would do to add some more gameplay elements and to uh, kind of motivate you to pick some interesting stuff as you go through the game but i didn't get that in so that's okay <laughs> i also made it so that the ball would damage the enemies at this point too because just the having the ball damage the enemy just kind of felt like it would make sense 
So the next thing I did then was, instead of just having this one enemy guy in the level, I knew I needed another bit of danger into the game. So I added a little projectile launcher that would shoot some fireballs across the screen that you'd have to avoid to take shots, which actually ended up being quite hard because sometimes the ball would end up in a position that you're going to have to uh, risk getting hit. So it became like a little mini game of trying to get your shot done really quick before the next bullet came towards you, uh, which actually ended up being pretty fun. So with that done, I basically then spent the afternoon creating a whole bunch of menus for the game. So the first thing I did was create a nice game over screen that would appear and encourage you, and encourage you to uh, try again and to go on a new run with a new character. With that done then, I then went back to my main menu screen that I had worked on previously and made it look a little bit nicer rather than just being a kind of dark green screen. I actually added a little bit of context to it so it made sense with the rest of the game. I also then went to the character select screen and made that look a bit nicer. And as I was doing that, I thought, hmm, let's make the button stand out a bit more too. So I made some custom button graphics for the character select screen, which I then later eventually just ended up using for all the buttons in the game because it kind of made a bit more sense, really. With those done, obviously if I've made a game over screen, I also need to add a victory screen into the game. So we need a way to, hey, spoilers here, but this is what happens when you win the game. You get a nice little uh, congratulations and stuff like that. Uh, I wanted to also congratulate the players by name. So at this point I had created a system on the character select screen that would add random names to your characters it take out of a whole big massive database of character names. I think there was something like 160,000 first names and 90,000 last names that it randomly picks from to uh, to name your character. It's kind of fun. Um, so at the end of the game, then you'll get it. You'll get that name called back up again and uh, be able to say, "Hey, I did it." Uh, so with that done, I then also went back to the main menu and made the options menu actually work. In the game, it was basically a placeholder at the time being. So very simple little options menu. Again, based on the kind of options menu that I made on Udemy, which is another free course that you can just go do yourself and uh, learn how to add the basics of a menu system into your uh, games, which is super duper handy and super duper easy to do. And with the menus all done, the next thing that I really needed to do was add some music and sound effects to the game. I didn't really have time to go and create my own music and sound effects. Now, sound effects would be easy to make with uh, BF, BFXR and stuff like that. But uh, I had a good like pack of open source sound effects that I like to use for different projects. So I just returned to that pack and got a whole bunch of sound effects that I could use. And also spent a bit of time looking uh, through uh, online resources and stuff for a bit of music but with those it took a little bit of time to find them but they're all open source free to use assets so I started chucking them into the game and trying to make them uh, work in the game so I just got all the music stuff in first but then I was running a bit short on time uh, I knew I wanted to get to streaming for the end of the jam so I started streaming and then I started adding in all the sound effects and stuff like that uh, at the start of the stream uh, while everyone was watching but then we had just under two hours left to go for the jam and I didn't have any levels in the game so it basically became time for me to go ahead and create some uh, golf courses for us to use and I knew that it wouldn't be that hard to create the levels I knew with the tile map system I had created for it I was basically giving myself a nice little chunk of time at the end in my head originally I had planned for the last three hours to be making levels, so I was a little bit shorter on time than I originally planned, but it was okay. I still had plenty of time for making the levels of what I wanted to do. So I made some easy versions to start off with, and then I made a little bit harder versions uh, for a couple of later levels so that you'd have a nice progression of difficulty in the game. And the harder levels were essentially the easier levels, but with enemies and the fireball shots, which actually do really affect how the game plays they actually really fundamentally change how the levels work so it actually worked out in a way that the level a lot of the level designs were the same there's a couple of di different ones as well like and they're not all the same but it kind of worked out well that the level designs are roughly the same so that you have this kind of familiarity with them from the first area but they're harder so you have this kind of you're adapting to a different kind of uh, play style with them which actually ended up being pretty fun. So as time ticked down, I finished up making levels and then uploaded the final build to the 
to uh, itch. And with that, the game was done. So you can see the, the finished version of this game on screen here now. It was a lot of fun to make and actually really fun to play through. I hadn't uh, given a good playthrough until uh, I was making this video and sat down to actually record some footage that you can see in the background there now. And I was actually playing through and I was like, oh, this is actually, I, I quite enjoy this. This is a lot of fun. It's not too hard, but it's also not too easy. You have to give it a bit of thought into everything. Uh, but it's also not too stressful because you're not under too much time pressure or anything like that in the game. But I really enjoyed making it. Obviously, there was lots of things that I wanted to get in that I just didn't have time to do. But it's good to, I always find in a game jam, it's good to plan to be able to include those features, but also to develop your game in such a way that it doesn't matter if you don't get to them. Like, always try and focus on the core gameplay elements first. Like, I knew the core of this was obviously uh, the golf, playing the little mini golf. So that was the very first thing I did. And then I knew that the other core thing was the level generation. So that's why my on the second day of the jam, that was a big focus of the kind of second half of the second day was me getting that whole system working and stuff like the stats and things like that that was stuff I wanted to get to but if I didn't get to them it wasn't the end of the world or anything anything like that so yeah I'm pretty happy with how this game turned out in the end uh, I think it was a whole bunch of fun obviously if you want to play it yourself there's a link in the description to go and check it out and you can also check out all the other game jam games at the moment uh, theme voting sorry not theme voting uh, the result voting is going on at the moment so you can uh, go and like play the games and give your feedback to the creators and let them know what you think of all the games uh, there's a lot of really cool games created i'm really looking forward to finishing going through playing all the games and then uh doing the kind of review video that i'm gonna have next week of some of my favorite games on the list so yeah i think overall games plus jam tree was an incredible success so many cool people came and got involved whether making games or just hanging out in the streams or on our discord server coming by and like sharing what they were working on or, sh or helping other people uh, kind of develop their games as they went and I actually found with this game jam there was actually a lot of people that were working in teams to create games there was obviously a lot of solo developers but there was a lot of people who just met for this jam and were creating their first little games together and stuff like that and that was really cool i really like that aspect of the jam in general so as i said we'll be back next week with a look at some of the games in the jam some of my favorite games we'll be taking a look at there and in the meantime i'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness obviously also soon so keep watching keep hanging out don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already make sure you get the little bell thing on because apparently that's very helpful and most importantly keep being amazing i'll see you all very soon